sophomore album is one of the scariest things I think most bands ever do or artists do because there was never any uh, fear on the first record because if no one liked it, it's like, oh, well, nothing, nothing lost, you know. Over the years, as I've changed as a person, I just kept doing Chasing Ghosts more so for the journey. Coming towards this album, you know, it's been four years. And in four years, you change a lot. I've had, I've lost some good friends. I've, you know, gone and played in some heavier bands for a little bit and had some fun. And I've met a whole bunch of different people and I've been through different relationships and I've changed as a person a lot. I've got to know myself a little bit better and maybe be a little bit more forgiving with my flaws and shortcomings. And I think all that comes to a place when you're writing music that you approach it slightly different. I knew Jim as uh, like a hardcore artist slash singer slash, you know, guitar player for Bellevue. And that was kind of all that I knew about what he did. And uh, he came to my place, you know, to catch up and whatever. And he brought it, he had his guitar with him and he just started playing like these folk songs. And that was kind of the genesis of the first record. And, and you know, I was really excited about the songs and it was just this such a, it was such a 180 for him musically that just that was kind of really exciting, but then plus they were also really good songs. So this is now just a continuation of that. Coming back to work with Andy Beck initially was about someone I knew I'd be really comfortable to work with again. That's a really hard thing because what you, what you want to do is capture your performance in the studio. And I knew to some degree Andy was a guy who would make sure I got the performances I wanted. He would capture the, my little shortcomings in a studio and, and be able to pull them out to me in a way that I could understand and, and then shift into my performance and try and capture really strong moments. When you are being vulnerable and you know, everything's sort of in its really early stages, that requires someone that you trust a lot. And coming back to working with Andy Beck is probably a lot around that. He did such a terrific job on the first record. Um, and I knew I'd feel comfortable with him. So working uh, with Andrew Newfield, or as Goose as we affectionately call him, is awesome. I met him while on tour with him, with, you know, uh, Sights and Sounds and Chasing Ghosts. I, you know, we've kind of just really bonded throughout just this experience, you know, just me coming down to Australia and working on the songs. Goose is one of the most, he'll hate me calling him Goose, uh, Andrew Newfield, he's very positively known, very professional, is probably one of the most positive people I know. His uh, enthusiasm with music is awesome. Yeah! Coming here, you know, just I, again, it's like, you know, you, I'm used to working with bands and he's like, just like, you know, it's just him. So it's his thing and, you know, I feel like pretty lucky to just like be on board with him and just kind of have his, have his trust. When you're like 16 and you first pick up a guitar and you might be in the band room at your high school like I was uh, and you start singing, there is just this insane excitement you have with every song you write and every fill the drummer gets right and, and every part that you, you pull together and you think is cool and you're so hyped on all of it. You know, you skip forward 10, 15 years, and you just, you do lose some of that. And Goose hasn't lost any of that. You got a new home. That was the best one yet. Five more of those. Okay. Jimmy had sent me a, a few demos beforehand, and um, I had a chance to listen to them, you know, a little bit before I got to Australia. And I just kind of went there and just kind of worked on the songs with them. Just kind of just put the songs in a place where we, you know, we felt more comfortable with them and just tried to get them to a place where we wanted them to be. You come from a place where you, you are a little bit jaded and you are a little bit tired and someone comes in and says, this is awesome. And constantly, every day buzzing. 
he's one of the most positive guys to be around, not just you know as a dear friend, but as a producer. Uh, and, and you start to get back that excitement you had when you, you were like a kid. And that's something like, you know, being about the journey, I don't want to lose that. So it was terrific to have Goose on board and, and be so focused around creating again and enjoying creating. Now we're finally kind of at the end of the project with Jimmy doing his vocals. We've kind of been waiting for a while. You know, Jimmy's been kind of also, you know, kind of with me behind the, behind the board a little bit, just kind of guiding people. When you're a soloist, you miss engaging with other musicians. I never thought I would, but I miss it crazy. I miss having people to bounce off and, and different sounding boards. So that was one of the motivations for having other artists come on and, and work on this record with me. The other motivation, I guess, is having your friends come along. So there's something really nice about sharing a journey with other people. In this case, we all got to get in the studio together, which was awesome. And we got to share a little moment in time that for the last few years I've been working towards. I think having um, D at C or, or, you know, Doyle Perez come and sing. It's funny because Doyle's got like a real bogan voice. I shouldn't talk because so do I. But um, he sings like a Backstreet Boy, like, man, he can sing. You were no longer the fever. Now what am I to do? Doyle's voice on this is amazing. Like it's no surprise, but we had a terrific time recording together and he's one of those guys that when he comes in the studio, I know I've got to bring my A game because he will smoke me if I'm not careful. First time I heard his album, I was so impressed and inspired. Uh, we toured Australia together. I've made a good friend. Uh, through this whole musical journey. Millie Tizard smokes both me and Doyle. She is such an amazing singer. She's terrific in a studio to work with. She helped both me and Doyle with some of the harmonies. I first heard Chasing Ghosts at, um, at the show that we were playing together. He um, opened for myself and Doyle and one other band. It was just a really honest set and he had a kind of way about him that other acoustic musicians didn't have and a really raw honesty which I appreciated as a musician. It was something that I hadn't seen too much of. Me and Millie sing together really really well. Her harmonies are amazing. And I would swing. She's a good little mate of mine for the last few years. That's been, it was terrific to have her on. Marcel from Dream on Dreamer is probably hands down one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. And I have a huge soft spot for Marcel. I first heard about Chasing Ghosts when I was um, working for my friend's shop down in Melbourne at a fence and he told me about this artist, this solo artist, you know, and I checked it out and I was really impressed, you know, it was really refreshing and, you know, I like my acoustic and singer-songwriter kind of thing and it was just cool to listen to and, yeah, I really liked the vibe where it, was, where it was going. It was terrific to come have him sing on this record and so we went with an approach of something we all grew up on which is more like Rancid and no one would have expected that from Chasing Ghosts and they wouldn't have expected it from Marcel and it's Marcel's sort of approach is a real Californian punk you know a bit of a Rancid feel and I like having his aggressive vocals on there and and using it as a feature um, probably not too dissimilar to how Tyrone sounded a bit like um, on the last record so you know I I was stoked to have Marcel come in and contribute. That's it. Yeah, yeah baby. You need the fucking energy. <laughs> no, Chasing Ghosts lyrically has been a lot around imagery, uh, creating uh, less of, I guess, less of talking about how something felt and more about telling you what it looked like so you could feel it yourself. And I think there are still strong elements of that with this, with this album. There is a slight shift towards the lyrical content being even darker, slightly more emotive, 
and slightly more cryptic and more open to interpretation. But like everyone, I've taken a journey in life and at times, yeah, I've probably partied a little hard and I'm sharing some home truths is that there's been times where, you know, my mental health hasn't always been the greatest and, and I've battled with that like everyone else. And I think that's pretty typical of, of a, a lot of guys that are, you know, in my space in the world. And, and I, I guess I talk to it a little bit. Some of the other stuff, I guess, is some of the failed relationships that have appeared in my life. And not just with partners, but also just in family. And, and I think that's a pretty universal human theme that a lot of people have. Anyone who knows him knows that he's like a super passionate guy and his music, his music definitely, definitely helps define that him. He's, he's a, it just, he's, he's super honest and that's the thing about, about Jimmy. He's just super honest and he puts it all on the table and um, that's something that I think is really cool. It's like he's just, and he puts it out, all out with his music too and I think it's cool too that he's like, not like shy about his, his art and his like and his music he's like pretty willing to get out there especially just him very like naked you know he puts his whole kind of like his whole self into this and I think that really shines through his music like he's always earnest but it never sounds earnest in a hammy way it's always it's always kind of just genuine and, and honest and and really I think people connect with that I certainly do it's just honest it's real uh, there's no sort of bullshit, it's not pop, you know, it's just straight up, it's life. And yeah, it's, it's just good, good to listen to stuff like that sometimes. I think what's really special and enjoyable about Chasing Ghosts is his ability to translate uh, feelings or emotions or situations that we've all been in before or that someone else understands what they're going through. So Jimmy just has a really unique way of being authentic and original um, but translating those feelings that we all have had. It just takes you through a journey of, uh, you know, his life and the way he grew up and, yeah, it's just a really honest approach of art and it's great. I'm actually really excited to be part of this. So it has been a few years since albums and I guess the, the weight was, was around a few things. One was stretching out into international markets Money's always an issue for any band. And then more than anything, just writing new songs and finding a new direction, it took time. A sophomore album does take time. And I was probably a little bit chilled on it, but I wasn't prepared to, to rush the process. And I wasn't prepared to rush a journey. That was never what Chasing Ghosts was about. And I had labels say to me, you know, you should have brought something out, you know, a year ago or two years ago. and and to those guys, fuck you. Chasing Ghosts is still very much about the friends I make on the way and, and telling stories, but I probably just try and get out of my own way. And that's probably the biggest shift, I think, is really focusing on enjoying the journey. Like, I think this record is gonna actually, it's gonna fucking kill. Like, it's, it's sounding amazing. I'm really psyched that I had the opportunity to come down here and work with them is absolutely not what I expected it to be in the best possible way. It's gonna surprise a lot of people. I'm stoked with the process and, and, and uh, I'm stoked with the, with the product. And I'm stoked where we're at. It's a very different record to the first one. I hope um, everyone enjoys it and hopefully I'll see everyone out of the show. Peace.